Okay, so this tutorial is sponsored by me. You can check the link to get my Solana Blockchain Developer Foundation course on Udemy. And also you can check my NFTs. I am working in characters in the 2D and 3D. Of, for example, this, I want to create uh, some ape hybrids. So you can check all my ape birds and this 3D I'm making. And this, for example, a bird punk. So let's start with the tutorial. Okay, so welcome to this tutorial. I'm going to teach you how to create this menu with the wallet adapter. You can connect to any wallet in Solana and you click on get NFTs once you connect it to your wallet and it will display all the NFTs, the first nine NFTs. And we are working further to make pagination and be able to access all the NFTs in the wallet. So we are using for this purpose this function that is get program accounts is a is a method from the R JSON RPC API and we are getting the data size of 165 for getting the tokens of a specific wallet okay so the first step is we're going to clone the project so you click on code copy we go to a terminal And then we click on git clone and we paste in the URL. Perfect. We have downloaded the repository. Then we're going to with VS Code. Okay, so next step is to open the folder that is in documents get nfts and we select the folder okay so now we're going to install the dependencies all these dependencies it's very important to install this version of metaplex because we are using a me method for getting the public derivative accounts and needs this dependency in a specific so here we put in our terminal you open your terminal and then you click on npm Install, save, web clears. Now also this, and you put at and the version without double quotes. And also we are installing the Solana SPL token. Also Solana Wallet Adapter Base. Also the Solana Wallet Adapter for React. Also, this wallet after React UI. The Solana wallet after for all the wallets. And we already declared the Web3S. So we also use React, React DOM, and web vitals we enter so i'm going to fast forward because it will take a little bit okay so perfect it has been installed so now we can go to our source folder and all the code is here so before we are explaining the code, let's make a build. So let's start the npm uh, React application. So it will take a while. I'm also fast forward because it's the first build. Okay. 
Okay, so the build is successful. Now let's check on the Chrome browser how to interact with the Solana blockchain. Okay, so you go to your local host with the port number 3000, you select the wallet, and here you can see all the wallets we support. But the NFTs are stored in a wallet address that uses Phantom to connect. So if we open the Phantom wallet on their collectibles, here you can see that we have 16 little chicks. So if we click in select wallet to connect and we need to click on the get NFTs and as you see it counts the number of NFTs 16 and gets the first 9 so the idea is to for a further video to make a pagination so you can go on for the 16 NFTs and also we are working in minting so now let's explain this code so we are going to go again to the Visual Studio code and this is a React application that uses the starter React app from Wallet Adapter so the render is here we React render the application this module that is here so we are using these 8 wallets we are importing from the React Wallet UI we are also using the, well, the wallet after the react dom we are using the web 3.js for connection for using the public key and the lamp for result we are using the metaplex foundation the token program id from spl token the solana wallet after css for the styles so first we create a functional component Call it up and we create the context that is here, also as a functional component. And inside the context is all the content of the app, the menu, all the, the NFT displayer, everything is inside the context providers. So here in the context providers, we initialize all the adapters for all the wallets we are supporting, and we return the connection provider that is connection provider props the wallet provider and the wallet model provider and we nest here all the content and the content is, an, is also a functional component we create the connection in this case to the mainnet and we get define the get the token tokens of owner and we need to pass the wallet address that we we will get it from when we are connected to the wallet adapter to the custom wallet we have decided depending on the provider in the example we use a phantom wallet but you can use solflare solet etc so we create an async function for connecting to the to the this wallet to the mainnet the we we use this token program id Okay, so we're getting all the tokens program ID and the size for the SPL tokens is 165. You can check the documentation that is, let's check. So finding tokens account for a wallet. We are using the get program accounts. That is a method from the JSON RPC API and the data size for the SPL tokens is 165. So this is the, the method that we use. Now let's go back to the code. Okay, so here we are wait for accounts for each, for each account, for each account that stores a token, for each account, that stores a token so we initialize the total nfts counter at zero and here we are we are adding 
if, if the amount of the token is one, we are adding one to the total NFT counted. We also getting the mint string and the object amount and we push to the wallet. Okay, so here, when, when all the accounts have been get it, we console log the total NFTs and we also react DOM render this, we create an span on total NFTs that is here. Here we put, here we pass the number of NFTs in the title, in the H1 as a span. And it's simply basic code. So, and finally here, we get the accounts metadata. So, Let's check this accounts metadata. Here is so we get we pass the mint address of the SPL token of the NFT, and other thing important is the number. So we make an async call, and here we are using the metadata. Here we create a public key with the Web3JS constructor and this metadata we get okay so the metadata is a metaplex class and we use to get the public derivative account so the mint token has a derivative account and we also load the metadata so with the metadata we can get with this token meta we can get the name of the nft and we can get the URI that is on our web, so we can get the image, the image, and a lot of more metadata. But the name, we can get it from here. So the next step is to update the UI. So let's go to this method. And to update the UI, we return a fetch. So we make a JSON call to get the URI that is from as you can see here we can have the image and more information like the description the traits the address that has mint if it's verified that is because it was minted on the sol C. So let's go back to the code. Okay, so here we make a JSON call to get the URI and get the image and get the name. And we display this on the, and we react DOM and render this to the application. Okay, so here come at the data. And here when, when we click the button to get the NFTs, we trigger this async function that uses a callback and we check if there is a public key. And if there is a public key, it will trigger. Okay, so finally let's explain the content HTML. So we only have uh, the navbar. And the navbar has this navbar inner. The wallet to open the in the right to open all the modal wallets. And the container. And the container has these get NFTs. And they are showed in in a row. And they are show three three NFTs for a row. So we are using Bootstrap, as you can see. Let me show you. In public. So we're using Bootstrap 
point two that is a beautiful has beautiful menus. So there is a row with okay, so we have a row here with three the row has twelve columns, so four spans for every NFT. And here we append the image. And here we append the title. And we have one, two, three NFTs. And we create another fluid row with the next three NFTs. So the idea is to create the pagination. It's not a developer advice. Write your own code and always test your code and read the manual.